Good day, everybody! It's time for me to do one of them videos where I talk about something I know all about, BMW motorcycles. I've never owned one. I've honestly hardly even ridden any, so I'm perfectly qualified because I'm a YouTuber to make an entire video talking about their whole lineup. If you've never seen this series before, this is where uh, me, old Jakey DeGar and Snakey, I go onto a manufacturer's website and see what they've been up to by just literally just going bike to bike and giving my over opinionated opinion and you all seem to enjoy it so who's really to blame here for this bmw though was a uh, one that came up a few times people wanted to see me do bmw what's the history of the brand i don't know they make cars before they made motorcycles i have no idea this one i've gone i'm going in blind i haven't looked anything up about them what does bmw stand for who cares nobody in america knows and you shouldn't either hey do you know there is a better version of this video that comes out earlier over on patreon it's early it's uncensored ad free you come hang out with us in the discord chat i mean actually chat i have a uh, audio chats in there unlike yami noobs <laughs> great way to support this channel and you can do it for as low as one dollar a month also be sure to go check out the gardensnake.com to get all your great garden snake merch hi we are BMW. Before we go into the models, is there anything else worth looking at here? Engineering. Safety 360. Safety requires a 360 actions, not a word. Vehicle technology. Rider training. Rider, rider equipment. Buying the motorcycle wasn't enough. Come pay us to teach you how to ride it. Ultimate care. I bet these things aren't cheap to get maintained. Who's got a BMW? Are they expensive? Look, they got a scooter in here. Is this like an electric scooter or something? What is this? It's just a scooter. If you rolled up on that, I would just assume that you put a BMW sticker on your stupid scooter. $200. And that, you know, is just some Chinese rebadged. Offer, fine. Let's just go to the models. We've had enough fun. Where shall we start? Where should we start with? Urban mo mobili mobility. Mobility. Oh, yeah. I get some scooters. Of course it is. Look at this one right here. This is wild looking. What's this thing called? The C... The CE04. Yeah. Oh my God. He has shown $14,300. And the electric scooter starts. The base is 11000 This is 14000 Okay. Swipe to discover revolutionary design. That's taking too long. The revolution's got to happen a little quicker than that. It's very, it's very weird looking. Oh yeah. That's what I'm about, man. Well, that's cute. Pressure, here's a heated seat. I'm sure that's a great idea on an electric machine. That's not gonna eat the battery up. This is such a hard sell because here's the thing. You can get that scooter and pay 14,000. Listen, even if you stuck with the BMW brand, you got this thing, which is 8,500. The difference between the two going, oh, well, I don't have to pay for gas now and all the, all the maintenance. Okay, like first of all, like half the maintenance of an electric vehicle, like the tires and brakes and blah, blah, suspension rebuilds. You have it on the electric one too. That hasn't changed. What are you gonna do? You're gonna put gas in it, which yes, it's gonna cost more. You know that's gonna get good gas mileage, stupid reliable. Where you get like an oil change a year on this thing or something. You know, if you're like super commuting, maybe two. You're gonna have to drive that electric vehicle so much. I mean, like a dumb amount of miles if you do the math to make it worth even buying this other BMW brand. Or you could go buy Suzuki Bergman or one of the other big CC Japanese scooters, which would probably be a couple grand even less and probably is even higher maintenance intervals. Oh man, all right, let's get off scooters. That's fun, that's good fun. Let's see what else, what do we got in here? Heritage, let's go up here to Heritage. Look at these big old cruisers here, 20 grand. I feel like it's almost too classy, if that makes sense. I just don't know how many people, at least in the US, are, are riding these things. I don't feel like I've hardly ever seen one of these out on the road. I'm sure your leg gets nice and hot being right behind the cylinder on an air-cooled engine, but that seems to be the thing they do on a lot of their bikes, and you know, I'm sure it's fine. I feel like that bike would do better though with a Ford Control. I don't know if there's a way to do Ford Controls with these. Yeah, I'm all about it, bro. They like, I feel like there's a lot of mo motorcycle manufacturers that like to show a commercial of someone like, working on the bike, welding it up and doing things like, oh my God, I, I simultaneously hate and love that. Sell it, sell that thing. You make them, you make them that classy, like, I don't know who it appeals to because I feel like the cruiser crowd, at least in the US, it's going to be into a bike like this, kind of wants like a more raw look. And these are almost too, you know, pinkied out. R9T, the R9T, 9T, not 19. But these are cool. It's that kind of a roadster-ish sort of, you know, naked. That's the color to get it in right there with the red frame. I think the seat thing like attaches, or deattaches on or it does something that could come off. Apparently we can only see this side of the bike. I. All the photos, look, you see like all the photos are of that side. And this is a zoomed in photo. What does the other side of the bike look like? Okay. Is that a single side swing arm? I think it is. Well, you got the exhaust like hiding it. You should 
you should show that off. I like it. It's a little pricey, but again, it's a BMW, so that might be, that might be reasonable. That's totally my style right there. And we get to see the other side of the bike. And yeah, that looks really nice. It's got the high fender. Man, they did it right with this thing. Get you an actual skid plate on there. Hey, remember I was saying they need to make like an actual, like modern scramblers. There you go. That could be, that could be one right there. You got a 19, 17 wheel combo. I like it. It's very cool. Roadster. Look at a little, uh, little 310 here. This is actually very reasonably priced too. 5,000 to 200. See, this is what's, this is what's smart. It's smart that they have a bike like this in this class. Cause I think there's a lot of people, especially, you know, starting out riding, they look at the BMW, the street bikes and sport bikes and something you can look at and you're like, Dang, that's like some top level bike right there. And people get super excited about them. If you're going to have bikes to reach for, I feel like you need to have a good entry level bike in there too. Like Ducati, for instance, people love the top in Ducatis. And the only really affordable Ducatis they have are the Scrambler. And that is a cool little bike, but it's not really in line with people that want a Pella, Gala, Walala, blah, 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 with the Desimo. If you don't have like a baby version of that, then you're going to go to something else. And if you end up going to like a Ninja 400 or an R3 or whatever, one of these other ones, you might find yourself kind of falling in love with that brand. I mean, it's how many people have done it? How many people, comment below if you have bought a brand, like a motorcycle from a brand, and then when you went to upgrade, stuck with that brand. I did it, I went from an R6 to an R1. Super smart to have this thing. I'm sure it's a fun little bike. It's got 30, 34 horsepower. I wish my little 300 made close to that much horsepower. It definitely doesn't. Ooh, those are good colors. That's a really good color right there. So this is a 900 naked style Roadster. Look, it's got a turbo on it. Inline two, this is a, a parallel twin. That's what's up, man. Big old 900 parallel twin. I bet that's a fun engine right there. 100 horsepower, about six. 67 foot pounds. What does it weigh? 465 pounds. I'd like it to be a little higher than that. This bike though, this is the one that's basically the S1000 thing. This is just the uh, the, the Roadster Neckety version. $18,000 has shown. Base, $14,000. It's crazy you can have such a big difference there in the prices. I like it. It's a good looking bike. Oh wait, this version, this is only 165 horsepower. Isn't this, I thought this was the same as the uh, the same engine in the, what's it called? Maybe it is. Maybe it's just like tuned different or whatever. Okay, you got this 1250 thing. Oh, it's got the, uh, that's the same 1250 that's in the, um, the venture bikes. Okay. I've always wondered what these are like with the cylinders like that. Like, cause it's, even if it's heavier, that weight's down low. But then of course you always tip that over and you're going to put that head in the ground. <laughs> I think they have covers on them, but still single sided shaft drive. Oh yeah. I think it is. It's just different. I like that sport though. So this is 1250, the R version. So that's the same thing we're just looking at with a fairing. I get that. But the S 1000 RR, this is the one that's like 200 horsepower, right? 205 horsepower, 427, that's the curb weight. That's pretty good. People, people are really into this bike. And I think the reason why is when it first came out, one, it was just different. I was still kind of into sport bikes when this came out. Like I was still kind of considering maybe getting another one. The top bike that people would think of is usually like a, like a Ducati or something, but Ducati like head to head with like a Yamaha or Kawasaki for instance, that was usually, those were quicker. So then BMW comes out with a 1000 RR and it's like, like back then I think it was like 190 something horsepower. Whoa, that was a little jump up. That was about 10, 20 more horsepower than a lot of the other bikes were putting out. And it was BMW and people were like, oh, it's ho, ho, ho. The, the Germans. And they got excited about it. I'm sure it's a great bike. I know Spicy110 was telling me he loved riding these things around when he took these out. They're good for sure. I'm sure they are, but I feel like it's a lot of it's just the hype of it. It's turned into a thing. I, I saw it. I saw how it turned into a thing. At the end of the day, the funny thing is like, you know, out on the streets riding around, does this really make a big difference over any of the other leader bikes out there that the Japanese four make? No. And most of us aren't going to be good enough on a track to really find the major differences between this and a lot of the other ones. I can also remember how when this bike first came out, um, I think they were actually trying to build it to a MotoGP bike, if I remember right. And it wasn't quite gonna have the lap time doesn't work and so they kind of scaled it back and they're like oh look we got this world superbike bike designed for the pole position yeah yeah you you certainly are you're not designed to win no i think they've got a little better since then though but that's that's kind of funny for i'm about to say because yeah they got a lot of pole positions one and two typically the flag would drop they jump out front running 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 and then you know what happened about halfway through the race, their tires would be gone. The rear especially, just they would just destroy the tire. Man, there was plenty of times the BMW guys weren't even on the podium. I remember seeing that. That was like the year these came out. Everyone was all excited about it. I was like, yeah, they're not actually doing that well on the track. And there's no way I'm going to be able to fully use it. And look at the price. And like, I, I could never justify it. I was like, it's cool, but I would just have to have dumb money just to have it. I feel like, I feel like it's more of a symbol, like a status symbol. Like, I've got the 1000RR, bro. Don't, don't let me hate it. If you love these things or you have one, no, they, 
Like, they certainly are cool, and they, at least they fixed the headlight. Because remember when they first came out, they had the... Well, this M1, I'm guessing this M1000R is, that's like a... I think it's 36,000. So this is like a track bike, just like I was the R1M. Oh, look, it's got the little winglet doohickeys on it. Even more so, like, this is a bike you buy to be like, look what I have. Or you just have dumb money. You can go buy one of these and take it to the racetrack. Oh! Look at these big old cows. Look at this sea cow. Please tell me this is like a straight six or something. It is, it's an inline six. Oh, 160 horsepower. Mm -hmm. 130 foot pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like right here on the side of the engine, it literally has a six on it. They're being, they want you to know. Oh, you know this thing's big and heavy, but that's it's your sport touring mega touring go around the world machine as long as you're on the good paid roads i'd look into this stuff more but i do have to kind of keep these moving along it's one thing i figured out about these videos you can spend way too long looking at these and i'm just trying to give you my quick impression what does this thing cost i didn't even look what is it it's like a car it's about it's got a car size engine it's it's the price of a car you can get it in ugly or uglier <laughs> and there's some other versions of it you know they don't have though that i wish they had still Remember when they had like the little X450 and the X, I think it was a 652, right? And that was back when BMW owned Husqvarna. And so I think that's why they had those bikes. I think it was kind of like, you know, you know, it was a thing. We do this with your hands, you know? They don't have them anymore. And that's too bad because I th always thought those were really cool bikes. But let's go look at adventure bikes here. Oh, there they are. Look at that. They make it look like they got 300 different adventure bikes. The reality is this is just a couple of adventure bikes with different trim models. And I do kind of hate it when manufacturers do this and they like, look at all these things we got. Like, calm down. This, this is pretty cool too. KTM's got their little 390 Adventure. Uh, Honda's got their little like 500X. And I, I like that there's like smaller Adventure bikes. You can really bridge between a dual sport, like a big dual sport and a small Adventure bike. There's, there's, a, there's a realm in there. Getting kind of a lighter Adventure bike, you know, cast rims are the, the biggest giveaway of that to me. Uh, the price though, 12 grand for this thing, really? I guess. I will say, when I, I, I noticed this when I worked at a gas station, these, these size BMWs, these sort of like middle class adventure bikes, people really use these as daily commuters. I saw a lot of people riding these kind of things around in the, uh, the 800 one two. I think back then it was just the 800, now what is it? It's an 850 now. You remember they used to have the deal with a gas tank was like in the back, like it was like in the subframe. You filled it on the side. That's what I can distinctly remember. It's why I remember when I worked at a gas station is people putting gas in the side of their bike and being like, hmm, my little squid brain was, was quite perplexed by that. Now, as soon as you go up to the 850, I feel like this gets a lot serious, sir. In fact, I think this is probably one of the more serious adventure bikes they have, uh, even more so than the big boy one, mainly because you got a 21 front. Suspension travel, wow eight in, in the front and 8.6 in the rear. This is a 500 pound bike. I mean, it's not terrible for having a big old 800 like that. Parallel twin 800, so it's probably pretty good. 90 horsepower, 63 foot pounds. I mean, that's all pretty good numbers, like a little heavier than I'd like to see, but this would be pretty good. At 15,000 though, I guess you have to start comparing it to things like the 790 or now 890 Adventure, which is probably still a little more hardcore than this. To me, this is like when people think of like the most extreme adventure bike that BMW has, they always think of the big one. And I always think it's this one because it's a little smaller with the bigger wheels, the more travel, the better ground clearance, all the things add up. It's weird looking right there. It looks so goofy. 18, 17, 18,000. Ah, like all manufacturers like to do that. They always like to have a few bikes in the adventure category that's like, but is it really? Anyway, that brings us to the grand finale, the 1250 GS, the freaking machine for going to Starbucks, the, the meme one. This is the, the middle-aged guy dumping way too much money into an adventure bike to go on an, and buying all his equipment to go on an adventure he never goes on. You think of the GS uh, 1200 or 1250. The worst thing that could have happened to this bike was probably also the best thing that ever happened to this bike, which was the long way around. If you've never seen that, that's Charlie Borman, Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor uh, with that Klaus guy who was the camera guy. So it was really just three of them, but two of them that you see rode around the world. They went from what London to New York going, Ooh. And it's actually a great little uh, mini series to watch. It's the best one out of the three. I think it was this great advertisement for the BMW and the GS bike, the big 1200 is what it was back then. But the thing was, it was so silly about that trip. It was an extreme hardcore trip and they were on this big, massive BMW, super loaded down, these bikes were. It, it, it was kind of silly. I, I mean, I felt like, I always felt like watching it, like, it seems like they probably should have gone with a smaller one. Like, 
I'm not, I don't know if 850 or maybe it was 800 was around back then or whatever it was. Again, I think that would have been the better bike to go with. I guess, you know, with these you do get, let's go and click on here. You get the shaft drive, 19 inch front wheels. Their clearance just isn't quite as high. And they're just a big motorcycle. Once you load them up and you're really going to take them on a trip, I'm like, I don't know, man. Yeah, for that big old engine, they're not that much power. I'm guessing they just must have a really linear drive it everywhere power band. I mean, 105 foot pounds is nothing to, to laugh at, but 510 watts of power. I wish I had a 500 watt stator. Suspension travel actually is pretty good. You have over eight on both front and back. Before you even load it up, it's just under 600 pounds. You know, those bikes were probably over 700 pounds, maybe even more the way they had them set up in the long way around. It wasn't like they just stuck to roads. I mean, they were doing an adventure. They were trying to hit the back roads in the in the outskirt places. I mean, it's a great series to watch, but you see the struggle in it. But so many people bought those because of this, the, the video series. I think a lot of people probably suffered with a way heavier bike than they needed. But then again, I guess a lot of people probably aren't doing that hardcore of an adventure. They're not going to go that crazy, and maybe they can make that work and they probably can $24,000 adventure bike I mean there's just better ways I think to do it there's cheaper ways still super reliable super capable you know I'm not hating on it it's not saying it's a bad bike I just feel like it's bloated excessive and expensive I love the idea of adventure bike riding I want to get into it more and more but I, I have no desire to do an adventure on a giant GS. It's it's also because of bikes like that that I didn't look into adventure riding for a long time because I was like it's an expensive it's a stupid expensive thing to, to ride on around stupid heavy bikes like I just never even considered it because when I thought of adventure bikes I just thought of that I always loved you know seeing some of the adventures people did on them but like I said there's so many better ways to do it I would literally rather go on an adventure with one of these and I'd have more fun and go more places and so would you thanks for watching <laughs> that is the end of the video though there's BMW for you I will say this about it as a whole yes they're a bit more expensive but they are pretty well equipped bikes I think they have shown to be plenty reliable I guess I was gonna go the route of buying a nice European motorcycle it'd be hard to pass up the BMW it's probably probably the brand I'd go with so that's my think thoughts on BMW who here owns a BMW which one do you have or are you thinking about getting one let me know what brand you want to hear me do next unlike some youtubers I actually do go through the comments and reply see you guys on the next video